good morning, however it'll be afternoon by the time that you watch this video. Today is the 27th of May and we're at the Hillier Gardens near Romsey in Hampshire where there is a display of the Test Valley vehicle enthusiasts. There are six cars near the entrance to the Hillier Gardens which is this building just here. There are also more at another part of the Arboretum and we'll see those a bit later. But first of all we've got this 1972 Volkswagen T2 known as a bay window in this shape. This is apparently was converted in Sedmouth in 1972. It's got a 641cc engine and those wheels are definitely not standard. It's called a Devonet, this particular type of body. Next to it there's a very, very special Austin 7. This apparently is as original as possible. It's not been restored. It's owned by the same person for many, many years. It's got traffic gators on it. If there's been any sort of restoration, it would have been an oily rag. It's got an 858cc engine. Absolutely beautiful. The Hillia Gardens, also known as the Hedy Arboretum, is about 15 minutes or so from Southampton Airport, which used to be known as Eastleigh Aerodrome, and a car which was actually built at Eastleigh Aerodrome in the 1960s is this Gordon Keeble GK1. They're extremely rare, they're made of glass fibre, they only made around 100 of them. There were about 80 cars made at Eastleigh, and then about 20 made in the continuation series by a dealer in North London. This is a 66 registered car, and the production Eastleigh finished in May 65. So I'm not sure if this is a continuation car or if it is one of the original ones made at Eastleigh that was just um, from stock. It's a 5.3 litre. V8 Chevrolet engine, and at one time this was the fastest four-door, sorry, the fastest four-seater car in the world. When I was uh, a lot younger, one of my friends um, restored an MGA. It wasn't a red one like this; it was a blue one. But this is a 1959 MGA 1600 that was restored some years ago. This is on a continuation plate because it went to America, then returned to Britain in around 1992. This is a Morris Minor, it's sort of a similar type of car to the Austin 7. This is from 1932 and it's absolutely wonderful. It was restored some years ago. It's in lovely condition. Very beautiful interior too. Look at that sort of typical kind of 30s vinyl roof. This has got a sunroof as well. And a very square back of the spare wheel just on the rear. Finally in this part of um, the display, this is a 1952 MGYB magnet that has the what's called the XPAG engine that was also used in the MGTD and MGTF at the same time. 1250cc engine. Very sort of pre-war looking car, even if it's a 52. And again, in really, really beautiful condition, restored about 14 years ago or so. Where's octagons on the dashboard there? So we're now in another part of uh, the Hillier Gardens, a place called German's House, where there are uh, six other pretty lovely or classic cars provided by the Test Valley motor enthusiasts. This is a 1930 Willis Whippet. It was uh, imported from America in 1989 and it was restored about 10 years ago. It looks pretty immaculate. I know nothing at all about these cars. Very simple design, beautiful paintwork. Looks like it's got a British 
Columbia plate as well as the continuation plate on it. And right next to that is this lovely Rolls Royce 2025. It's a similar type of car to what was used in the last series of the Avengers, although one was a Silver Ghost, one was a Phantom One. This was a 2025, originally registered in Derby. Open Tora bodywork. Massive, massive car. These actually aren't that um, valuable, these ones, for some reason. Probably £25,000 or something like that will buy you a Rolls Royce 2025. Although, as you only note here, they're very, very expensive cars to maintain indeed. Beautiful. Earlier on, uh, we saw a 1952 MG YB Magnet. And this is the sort of sports version of that. This is an MG TD for 1951. Has the XPAG engine of 1250 cc's. This is a car that hasn't been restored recently or anything. Again, it's beautiful, beautiful interior. Some slight patina on it, but it probably adds to the age of the car and makes it look in some ways more appealing. Very, very attractive colour indeed. We've also got another 1920s Rolls Royce here. This is a Rolls Royce 20, you can tell that by the that the grill slats go horizontal rather than vertical. It's a 27 Hooper bodied Rolls Royce that was originally supplied to a gentleman in County Durham. It's been owned by the same person since 1970. Beautiful, beautiful interior. Very sort of statesman-like, of course these did carry royals at the time. Again, lots and lots of patina on this car. Very, very, very attractive. And again, they're really not that valuable. About the same as someone like an Escort RS Turbo from the 80s if you wanted to buy one of these. Extraordinary. Another wonderful car, right next door to it is. Austin 7. This one's an 29. Wide or Saloon. Again, owned by the same owner for around 50 years. Could never get over how tiny these things are. Finally, we've got this 1938 Rover 10, which I believe is actually. Um, a fleet car originally from Rover because this was allegedly built for the 1939 Motor Show. It's got uh, sort of Coventry or Sully Hole plates on it. This is very similar to what the Rover P3 was in um, the late 40s. This is a sort of a continuation of one of these, although this is a pre-war car. Beautiful, beautiful colour. Very iconic car, and again, this car's been restored. And it's been with the same owner for about 15 years or so. Very lovely indeed. The final section of the display today by Vitesse Valley Motor Enthusiasts has uh, some more modern cars. This is a 1982 Mercedes W123, also known as just a 200. It's a four-speed manual, very rare, and has been in the same ownership for the last 20 years or so. It's done over 160,000 miles. In front of that we've got this uh, Humber Scepter, I believe they're called. It's uh, based on the Hillman Supermix. This is a 66 car. Now, the Super Minx by this stage was in its I think, Series 4 or Series 5 guys 
and the rear window of the um, the super mix had been sort of flattened out. The Humber Scepter kept this unusual rear window design right until the end. Very lovely colour. Again, evidence of patina, especially on the roof. And it has the 1725 engine, which the sort of later super mixes and Humber Scepters had. This is a 1971 or 1972 Wolsey 6. Very, very interesting colour, typical of the era, what they used to call safety colours in the 70s. This was essentially what they call a land crab, or ADO 22, um, Austin or Morris 1800, but uh, with a Wolsey badge and a 2.2 litre six cylinder engine known as the E series. When I was uh, growing up, actually, one of um, my mother's friends had one of these in this colour. Interesting how compact it looks compared with a modern car, but the interior is extremely spacious. Front wheel drive, even if it's a Wolseley, it kind of looks a bit basic compared with the sort of larger old Farina ones. And somebody's fitted um, Series 1 Rover SD1 um, 3.5 litre wheels to this, which uh, kind of looks oddly fitting, although they really don't have anything in common at all. This is a bit unusual, it's a 1965 Skoda Octavia Combi, a bit different from the Octavia of these days. It's got a 66 plate on it, but I imagine it was made in 65 right-hand drive as well, which, you know, is unusual. Tail fins are very reminiscent of Sabre 50, so it's a bit of an old-fashioned design by 65. Nevertheless, it's rather attractive. Unlike a lot of Skodas that came later, this actually has a front engine. It's a 1.2 litre overhead valve engine. This is a Lomax 223 based on a Citroen 2CV from the mid-70s, although it's on a Q plate. It was built about 1990, but it's had a motor Guzzi engine put in it from 2008. I bet this thing doesn't weigh anything, so it's pretty fast. Dates from about 1990 or so, though it's a kit car, so it has a Q plate on it. Right next to that is this lovely Triumph Stag, so it's like a Mark I Stag. Love the wheels on it, very similar to the Dolomite Sprint. Recognise that gear lever with the overdrive switch on it. Unique V8 in these, 3 litre V8, nothing to do with the rubber V8 that they also made at the time. Lovely. This is a 1977 MGB GT. Like a locally supplied car which uh, was from New Milton, which is in the New Forest, that's not too far from here. Restored at about 1999. Really, really lovely condition. This is the rubber bumper model that was made after 1975. Wonderful seats as well. Although they've got a reflection of a Mustang in the window, so I don't know if you can see those or not. Actually, let's take a look at this Mustang here. The 68 Mustang. Lovely colour. Yep, it's on an F plate, 68. Left hand drive. These never were officially sold in Britain, of course, so anything you're likely to see of 60s Mustangs must be imported. They weren't officially imported until I think it was 2004 or something like that. Originally from San Jose, 289 cubic inch V8 with a three speed automatic. Lovely. When I was growing up, one of the cars that uh, a colleague of my father's had when he worked at a uh, local six one college was an AC 2 litre. This is an AC 2 litre as well. It's probably around 1950 or so. Very stately looking car, very different from the Ace and the Ace here and the Cobra and things like that. Very kind of typical to the immediate post-war period. 
Might even be sort of ash frame or something. I like this. Certainly lots of wood on the dashboard and wonderful sort of 30 star wheel. Let's get a shot of that back with the two piece rear window. Very nice indeed. Another 30s Rover here. This is a Rover 14. Not sure what year this is. I imagine mid 30s. Lots of patina on this one, but absolutely beautiful. Love this spare wheel cover. Another MGB rubber bumper here. This has got an 82 plate on it, and they finished production in Abingdon and these in 1980. So this car must have been hanging around at the dealership for some time. It's got the uh, wheels of the last MGB's ever made. It's got the interior, that's all correct. This is what they look like right at the end of production. It's very, very attractive somehow in this kind of grey paint, although a lot of people don't like the rubber bumpers. Another MG here. This, I believe, is another TD, similar to the one we saw earlier. So be around 1950 or so. Very attractive and of course this is actually a TF, this is a, a 2002, we think this is a factory plate given to Birmingham registration, this is a 160 with the variable valve timing K-series engine. Very lovely interior. Apparently they only actually made um, four of these in this particular colour. Only done 44,000 miles. These cars are not expensive at the moment. This is the coil sprung um, car, the MGF before that had that um, hydro gas suspension. And we've got an MGB here. This is a 1966 model. This is a quite an early one. It looks like that's even a sort of iron plate on it. So might have been originally supplied by the factory. Love the old steering wheel and that, and the uh, lovely gauges. These uh, early MGBs are much more expensive than rubber bumper ones, of course. This is a 1959 Morris Spina Traveller. Judging by the one-piece windscreen and the, the wipers meeting in the middle like that, it's before 1962. This will have a 948cc BMC A series engine. Woodwork looks in lovely condition. Very, very nice colour indeed. And of course, uh, you can tell it's before 62 again because it has this rather lovely three spoke metal steering wheel. The car that was based on the minor was for Wolsey 1500. This one's probably late 50s, maybe early 60s. Much kind of uh, nicer dashboard with all the wood on it. One of my friends when I was growing up had a father who I think still has one of these actually. Bit of information here. Yes, it's a 57. Typical 50s colour scheme, two tone. Beautiful. This is a 1972. Rover P6, it's a 2200 TC, this is the Series 2 model. Again, I think Matt from Furious Driving will appreciate this. It says 2000 TC on it for some reason, I'm not really sure why. Typical kind of um, P6 wheels. Beautiful, beautiful dashboard. Very nice condition. And next to that um, final car we've got on display here from the Test Valley Motor Enthusiast is a 1924 Austin Heavy 12. That body is interesting. It was built in 71 apparently. It had been in a barn for quite a considerable time. So I hope you have found that. Uh, video interesting. Apologies for the wind noise and any incorrect information, that's just the way it goes with these uh, slightly symbolic shuffles. If you wish me to source a car for you, it doesn't have to be anything that we've seen today. 
but my website is www.lloydvirconsulting.co.uk. My Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash Lloyd Consulting. Don't forget to uh, leave a like if you wish to do that. I'll put a comment down below. And uh, please subscribe to the channel. We've got plenty more shambolic shuffles coming up. If you should be to source a vehicle for you, then the best way to get in touch with me is via my website. Just uh, click the contact link in the top right hand corner and get in touch. There's not to be anything we've seen today, of course. Thank you very much indeed for watching.